YouTubers! Welcome back for another adventure. I am forever changing motorcycle, all-terrain vehicle, and tractor batteries. So, now to try something new. So this is a lithium-ion battery instead of a gel cell or a wet lead-acid battery. Um, and I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot. The first thing you're going to notice when you look these up um, you could typically buy a, uh, a conventional battery for somewhere around 50 bucks. These are about a hundred and a quarter. So you get almost a 3x price difference. The second thing you're going to notice is it is crazy light. Like, I think the box, the box weighs almost as much as the battery. I, uh, when I picked it up, when I took it out of the box, I said to myself, are they messing with me? Did they just send me a plastic box, like no batteries inside of it? But this is crazy, crazy light. So here are the advantages. It's lighter, maintenance free. Supposedly 2000 extreme cycles versus 350 for lead. Some of the cheaper batteries, if you extreme cycle them, you know, grind your starter until the battery is dead. It seems like you get three cycles, not 350. Six minute fast recharge time. Mounts in any direction includes built in, easy to read. Right when you push this button. Right, you see those blue lights right on the edge there, light up. So, all very nice. Let's see how well it works. I bought this battery for a Kawasaki Lakota. The particular Kawasaki Lakota seems to go through a lot of batteries. I think this is the fourth one for it. It does not have a drain problem. It seems that if you don't have a full 12 volts while you're cranking it over, you don't get spark, so the thing doesn't start, which means you crank and crank and crank on it, then you put the jump pack on it or the battery charger on it, and you get it started. But each time you do that, that's one of those extreme cycles I'm talking about. So, um, anyway, specs, 12 volts, obviously, 48 watts, um, 240 uh, cold cranking amps. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my little tester on there, and we'll see if we get any of those things. Here we go. You can see 13 volts, so it's nice and charged. And it comes with measured 265 cold cranking amps. It's calling this a good battery. That makes us happy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a load on it and see how much the voltage drops. Once again, this Kawasaki is very fussy. It wants all of its 12 volts or we don't get spark. Anyway, you can see it's basically 13.4 open circuit. This thing's, these things typically pull between 5 and 10 amps. So if we fire it up. Seems to hold voltage pretty good. What we're going to do is smash this into something, turn it over, and see how well it does. Let's quickly um, talk about charging in this thing. Um, around me, they've had quite a few of those lithium ion battery powered scooters um, do an auto ignite thing and uh, burning down multiple family dwellings and doing horrible things like that. So if you read here, and let me set it up, I'll let you guys read it on your own. Um, I think you can see it all. It basically tells you you want to put on between 14 volts and you don't want to go over 15 volts. So let's make it 14 to 14.9. It says it needs a full 14 volts to fully charge itself up. And it says at 15 volts you could end up with a tragedy. If you're lucky, the battery just gets destroyed. If you're unlucky, it takes your all-terrain vehicle and house with it. How do you make these batteries? You typically end up 
with a metallic film, an insulator, right, and another metallic film. The thinner the insulator film is, the more efficient your battery is. The only problem is the thinner your film is, the more sensitive it is to putting a high voltage on there. Because what happens is you punch through, you weld these plates together, and the next thing you know, the next cell in your battery gets even more voltage. And then it punches through, right? And now the remaining cell gets even more voltage and when it punches through it typically does it with such gusto it ignites lithium ion batteries are also made out of flammable things <laughs> so as you're punching through all these things right eventually between the arc of the punch through and the heat of having it cook it will catch fire and it's flammable very flammable and makes a big mess I've quickly checked a few things. This is one of those uh, capacitor batteries. And if you hook it up to this and let it charge for a while, you'll get over 15 volts. So smashing it on your regular battery charger isn't really kosher, right? Um, it says it charges in six minutes. And perhaps... By the way, I doubt this thing puts out enough power in six minutes to charge this thing up to 48 amp hours. But um, even if you put it through a resistance like a light bulb, you really don't want to put more than 15 volts across here. So careful, eh? I have a um, pulse charger doing its thing right here. Right, generally speaking, this guy doesn't seem to go above um, 15 volts, but this thing is pulse charging. <laughs> so maybe a, a slight punch in the arm um, doesn't hurt, but if that punch keeps coming and coming and coming, you got to worry about it also. Once again, what I like about this, though, it doesn't seem to go over 15 volts. This guy does. It tells you right on the screen as it's charging. As it's ramping up, it goes over 15 volts. So charging it, you want to be careful. And you also want to kind of put a meter on it as your all-terrain vehicle is charging it. Because um, typically they don't charge over 15 volts. But my concern is, does your all-terrain vehicle get up to somewhere around 14 so the thing could get a full charge? To make this a little more interesting, I dug out this recon from out back here. This thing is somewhat famous. It's from, there was a TV show, short-lived, Outsiders. Just Outsiders, no, the in front of it, just Outsiders. It was about a hillbilly crew, West Virginia perhaps. Anyway, it was filmed right in Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh. And this thing came from a junkyard out there. Anyway, I smashed the battery in, and I put a meter on it, and this thing hasn't been started in forever. There's no gas in the tank, which normally means the following happened. Notice it's wet on the ground right there. See a little dripping out. I, um, I just put a little bit in the intravenous bottle. What happens is a lot of times, the float, um, the fuel was not turned off because that doesn't work on this thing. So I left a little fuel in there and what happens is as it evaporates, the float goes down and it sticks and then the fuel just kind of dribbles out over time. Anyway, so it's all hooked up. I even found the key, which is a good thing on, right? You guys can see the green light. And if you hit the button, by the way, um, chokes on this is a cold start right um, probably won't start it probably flood it anyway so if you push the button you can see the voltage stays above oh, I like that
Oh, I did a lot. <laughs> Runs. So back to charging, just quickly. Um, it does not charge your battery over 15 volts, which is good because you won't burn your your alternating vehicle down, or at least not my recon. But it also doesn't quite get to 14. It gets to 13.2. So it's debatable if that battery is getting up to full charge. At 13.2, there's actually a charging chart. You could look at these and take a look at it. If it gets to 70% charge, that's kind of optimum for long life <laughs> um, and everything else. So maybe that's good enough. Anyway, I wanted to do a quick video on this. This is kind of a first impression of, of this battery. It seems to have plenty of power. It's nice and light. It looks like if your charging system is working properly, it shouldn't hurt it. If you are going to char charge it, it shows you what precautions you should take. It's a $125 battery, so you don't want to be killing it by overcharging it with, with or whatever. You can hear from the way that recon started. It's got plenty of push, pl plenty of amps, plenty of kick to spin that starter right over. You can see the voltage stays up there above 12. So if you have an ignition system that's dependent on 12 volts DC to fire a spark, that all works, right? So I think this thing, um, I think this battery is going to work out. I think it's going to be very happy in its new home in the Lakota. And unfortunately, the Recon needs a new battery. Batteries really do put me broke. I should uh, I should set them up with wing nuts on top so that I can quickly hop them in and out of everything and uh, get the keys, get the battery, <laughs> start the quad kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please remember, keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Who knows? Maybe you'll find a somewhat collectible all-terrain vehicle out there someplace. Bye now.